Ahoy, shipmates. It's the Southampton International Boat Show, 10th to the 19th of September 2021. As you can see, my ability to read is still intact. I did try live streaming yesterday, uh, but it just did not go very well at all. I couldn't get enough data from the phone to give you a good enough picture, rather unfortunately. I did try some tests on Friday at the boat show, and that seemed to be all well and good. But as with all of these things, on the day it just didn't work. So instead I brought my little camera with me, and I thought I'd just give you a, a walking tour instead. The boat show this year is larger than ever, and it's right up here in the old walls of Southampton Whiskey. This is one of these neat hoverboards that we have seen on the boat show cam, people in the demonstration area. It's a hydrofoiling surfboard powered by electricity. There you can see the little motor there and the hydrofoil wings. It takes you up out of the water and buzzing along. All sorts here. We've got some lovely looking wooden surfboards there. As ever, we have the life vests and inflatables, always necessary in the world of boating. The sup man here, with a variety of sups and paddle boards. I'm not sure if there's a difference. Just goes to show you the variety of boats there that are here at the boat show. It's not all about 10 million pound super yachts. There are many very easy ways to get onto the water. And we've got a couple here. Look at these little plastic dinghy things. 1,699 pounds. I wonder if Mrs. Ships will let me buy one of those. Although Rusty might think it's a last chew toy. Oh, see one there with an electric motor on the back. Well, now that does look small. Oh, that's 5,399. That's quite expensive, isn't it? Ideal, though, I guess, if uh, you have that need for that type of vessel. It looks very sturdy. So this is the long walk down to the main part of the boat show. So we have all sorts of vendors of various different bits and pieces along here. Ranging from some locally distilled vodka, I noticed earlier. A chap here selling sandals, some description. A company that rents out the hoverboards. Fitness related equipment there as well. And here we have some inflatable kayaks. A uh, nice lady here was telling me that the cushion under the seat is also inflatable, just to give you that little softer ride. Capable of holding two people. I think there's an electric motor to drive along as well, should you feel a little lazy. I wonder if Rusty the dog would fit on that as well. That could be a boat purchase coming up. More paddle boards. They seem to be increasingly popular over the years. A very accessible and expensive way to get on the water. Now, boating is often not very friendly on the environmental front. But here's an alternative. Electric outboards. Although these ones seem to be chewing up ducks. And these are great little ideas. They're ideal to go on your small rib, inflatable, or perhaps even a very small fiberglass boat. I have seen quite a few people using these on their tenders on their boats because you can charge them from your solar panels on your boat. So if you happen to be traveling the world and you don't have access to easily access to fuel, it's a great way to have a tender. There's some rather large bean bags there, but they were hidden behind some people, didn't see those. Here's some small dinghies and a rowing boat. And again, some more paddle boards. I couldn't uh, tell you the difference between a paddle board. Apart from they're all different sizes, different brands, manufacturers. 
are the UK's biggest inflatable sop. Thank you for the leaflet, my dear. And now we have a little more boaty thing here, the North Master. Appears to be a small fishing vessel, 26,000. It's getting a little more expensive. Oh, this is interesting. This is a ocean rowing craft. That's not unlike a no rowing boat I've seen before. Radar, solar panels. I think I would prefer a little engine or perhaps a coffee. Getting down here into more small dinghies and small sailing boats. Now, this one is interesting. It's a foiling dinghy. Now, you may have seen the very large racing yachts these days that sort of run on hydrofoils. And that's exactly what this small one's got here. You have these orange, they're called foils here, like wings on an aircraft, essentially. And once you're in the water, you push them down. You can just see them underneath there. And as, as you're going along, they will lift the boat out of the water and thus increase your speed massively. You need to have fairly flat water for that, though, and more skill than I have, that's for sure. And a few more different types of catamarans here. Very fast, most of these small dinghies. More safety equipment. Wetsuits for when you're on your sup. Trailers, of course, to get your boat to the water. And more small dinghies. It's a very small one there. Great way to learn if you're a child or never been on the water before. When you fancy getting into sailing, dinghies are an excellent, fun adventure. Of course, you don't have to buy a new one, you can buy a second hand one. And these are a little different. These ones are more old fashioned looking than a wooden. There was some literature on the top here that said they'd won quite a few races. An awful lot of lines in there. I wouldn't know which one to pull. Now this is a very minimalist looking dinghy here. Plastic with a couple of buoyancy aids on the side. Didn't see a price for that, but I know it looks looks like that could be a lot of fun and inexpensive as well. These are ideal for children, some of these small dinghies, because if they, even if you turn them over, they don't sink. They're having built buoyancy. Very good. Now a few more inflatables. Ribs. Rigid inflatable boat. That's what ribs stands for. Now this chap was interesting. I had a nice little chap talk with this chap here. He makes these little wooden dinghies look, look really good, don't they? You imagine you, you can imagine yourself having a lazy Sunday afternoon in one of these. But what is good about them is that they fold up. Look at that. Amazing, isn't it? Completely folds up. Pop that in the back of your car or perhaps on the roof. Absolutely ideal. Now we're a bit of a bottleneck here. The bridge doesn't open until 10 o'clock. So I've got a little look. Oh, hello, here's a, here's a friend for Rusty. A few more sailing boats along here. Other boating related additional services. And some dog food for your dog. Might have a look at that later on the way back. Some gardens and furniture. Not entirely sure how that fits in with boating. Perhaps if you're interested in being outside, you might want a bit of garden furniture. But this is more like it. Now, this is a wonderful looking vessel that uh, the chap just behind the stern there built himself. According to a little information there, what he was telling me, 
He thinks there was 17 coats of varnish on this one, but he can't be sure. He may have lost count. Harks back to the sort of river boats of the 1930s with the design. A bit of brass work on the front there. Miss Eel. Very clever. Powered by a uh, marine Ford engine. And uh, usually in the, the middle of the ship. Typically the engines tend to be at the end. Or at the very end. This one's in the middle. And the cockpit is here. Towards the stern of the vessel. Some woodwork and detailing here. It's simply wonderful. Reminds me of something like a vintage car or an aeroplane. All those various memories of vehicles gone by. Lovely filler cap there. Beautiful bit of engineering here for the rudder at the rear. Beautiful and elegant all at the same time. Fully functional. That's a marvellous bit of kit. Well, the beauty of the boat are all sorts here. So we have some flags. And they should have flags that say ahoy, shouldn't they? Uh, they missed a trick there. And balls. Oh, we all need balls. Oh, heading, getting closer to the main part of the boat show now. Just navigate through this little bit here. And a, another wooden boat. Now this is a company called the Boat Building Academy. That's way beyond my ability as a woodworker. Putting up a set of shelves at the weekends is quite a challenge. Trying to produce a fantastic looking vessel like that looks quite hard work. Have a 40 week course. Also do furniture and things. You know, find yourself a loose end. Fancy making yourself a boat? Probably give those guys a call. This is quite an elegant boat. It's the English Harbour Yachts. Sort of puts me in mind again of a riverboat, but more of a, a modern version of a riverboat. A couple of seats at the stern and a bow table. Uh, easily tradable. Uh, this is an interesting looking little boat. Look at that. It's actually a folding boat. So the boat goes into itself thus making for easy transport and then it goes back together and makes a full boat £2,950 it's very good and if Mrs Ships and I wanted to go a different way we could just float off in our own half sailing catamarans well, that looks like some combination inflatable paddleboard rowing boat more importantly, the ice cream man is also here. More wooden boats. Various different wooden finishes for your boat construction. A wine stand yet to see a rum stand here at the boat show. Now, rather unusually, you have to go over the road, over this temporary metal gantry. Part of the boat show we've just been to is the zones they call getting, getting on the water and dinghies and wooden craft. Now, once we go over this gantry, we'll be into the main part of the show, as you can see there, those, all those massive tents that you can also see on Boat Show Box Cam. And there'll be a lot more boats this way, and also the marina part, the floating part of the exhibition. Which is the largest floating exhibition in Europe. Just interestingly, you see here at the bottom of the picture is a houseboat. I had a quick looking at that. It was 
quite impressive. Quite large as well. It really was. It really does feel like a proper house on the water. I guess this is a few more wooden boats here. Various different shapes and sizes. And here's the Float 8 houseboat. As you can see, it has a real modern design to it. So our American cousins might call that a double wide. Across the road here and into what is Rusty's favourite park in Southampton, Mayflower Park. That's completely occupied by the boat show. Now we'll get to see a few more boats here. The smart liner, sort of a small fishing style vessel. Day, day style vessel. Got a, a few of them around this part of the show here. This is the regal stand here. There are various different configurations of day boats. Some have no accommodation space on at all. Some are what they call cuddy cruises with just a small enclosed space in the bow. Some of the slightly bigger ones you can actually stay on. They have a, for instance, have a toilet and a bit of a berth in there. Often people's first uh, proper boat would be one of these types of boats, day cruiser or a small cuddy cruiser. Or of course a rig, a rigid inflatable boat. And of course, if you have a boat, you need an engine. These chaps here sell a variety of marinized engines. I think we'll take a shortcut this way. I've started the boat show fairly early this morning, so I'm trying to beat the crowds, and it looks like I've found a bit of a gap here. Of course, you have a rib uh, or a small boat, you often need an outboard, and they come in varieties, different sizes, and different manufacturers. To be honest, they all look very similar and they all perform very well these days. I think gone are the days of unreliable outboard engines. They're all, they're all very clean running, environmentally friendly as much as they can be. Electric starts, very quiet, very good. Got another variety of on-board, on-water activities are these jet skis or jet ski types. But this one I thought was very versatile, this sea -Doo. If you can see on the back here, it has a fishing rod, fishing net and a bait box. Also a fishing rod holder in the middle. This is the fishing model. So if you fancy going out and doing a spot of fishing, take your sea do fisher with you. The Fish Pro 170. 18,269. Quite a bit more than that dinghy we saw earlier. I particularly like this Mercury Verado outboard engine. It's the largest one they produce recently launched to the market 600 horsepower twin counter rotating pumps and interestingly this engine actually pivots well on that silver part of the engine have a look at the details here v12 7.6 liters and electric start well that's good to know because i'm not sure i'd want to hand pull that one Williams there, yeah, Williams tenders, oh, particularly enjoyable jet tenders. And we have the Sunseeker stand there for your Sunseeker hospitality. If you're looking at buying that super yacht, they'll whisk you in there for a, a beer and some peanuts. A very elegant looking lake boat, this one. Lovely colour. 
More ribs. More ribs than I would know what to do with, frankly. I guess the advantage is some of these smaller ribs, they, they will obviously deflate and they have collapsing floors. And then you can stick them in a your car so it does make accessibility to the water and price convenience very easy. And I'll take electric outboards, obviously, or petrol driven outboards to various different sizes. Another good way to access the water. And you can see here in the boat show on the floating marina parts how close we are to the cruise ships. This is the anthem of the seeds here. Came in this morning. We'll have a quick look around the floating aspect here of the Southampton Boat Show. Of course, not only does it cater for various different budgets. I'll have a look down here, we have the smaller Suzuki boats there. Of course, typically used for a little down water, probably a bit of fishing, that's what they're aiming at. And then next to that is the small Sunseeker. And then the size of the Sunseekers gets larger and larger and larger. It's almost like cruise ships. But only, not only do they cater for budgets, also cater for abilities. Now these little boats here, there's two of them. They have interesting front loading abilities for, like you see, they're the chap with the wheelchair. That's the slightly larger one. This is the slightly smaller one. You can you can gain access to that one via the loading ramp and the front. So that gives all people of all abilities access to the water. Let's have a look what do I fancy down the Sunseeker row. Um, I think probably this one looks in budget. If I save up hard, I'd imagine eventually I'll be able to afford that white object on the bathing platform, which is a an underwater propulsion thing for when you go diving. That's probably in my budget. The rest of it's well beyond. Get a great view of the anthem of the seas from here. I don't think we normally get to walk this close. This Sunseeker here, Yacht 88. Some information on here, and something I did notice on the 88. It's the range at 12 knots, 1300 nautical miles. It's quite impressive. Generally, the sun seekers are getting bigger the further we go down. So that was an 88, this is 76. And this one's interesting, there's actually a space right on the back. For the tender, the Williams jet tender there, passerelle there, giving you access to the key. Unusual style of vessel. These often uh, accompany super yachts as the sort of entertaining toy boat. Probably not quite this type, but uh, that's a sort of market sector they're aiming at. Back to these smaller boats again now. Whole range here of varieties from the obviously completely day boats that I think are more suited to the American market up to the bigger boats probably more suited to the British market with heating. There we go, it's not quite a nice shot there isn't there? Does make that rather large yacht look very small, does the Anthem of the Seas. Chap there on his sup. Normally they don't uh, approve of people supping in this area of the port, but special dispensations for the boat show. And the Royal Navy's here as well. The 
brought a couple of boats along and I think they're looking to drum up business from a new cadets it's the HMS Sabre look slightly out of place I must say here in the boat show with all the other white shiny gin palaces to have a couple of slightly grubby grey naval vessels but I think I'll have a quick look on board there's something I've just noticed which I think is an optional extra that would be highly useful on your average powerboat I think that's a version of the modern version of this one okay on the aft deck here really all sorts of different bits and pieces I think you'll probably saw on the aft deck there is a machine gun ideal for pesky oyster catchers that are flying around while I'm trying to do a droning Let's see if I can get an optional extra one of those next time I'm out droning. Okay, back here. This is the Galleon. I think this was the 840. Galleon are particularly in, ingenious with their designs with lots of these fold out sides, as you can see here. And even on their smaller vessels, this is the 400, I think. This is got genius little fold out sides on here as well. It gives you so, so much more deck space, especially when you're at anchor somewhere or if you're in a marina with a space on the side. More entertaining space without having a massively bigger butt. Very small galleon there. A couple of yachts here. The they were they're here for days on the water. I'm not sure if these people have booked up or something, but they're essentially going out on the water for a little while. They do. Uh, the boat show runs a number of experiences for all sorts of different things, and quite a few companies operating various different experiences here. I don't know much about this one. I'm guessing it's another historic historic navy vessel. Certainly looks quite old, doesn't it? I'm guessing probably some sort of high speed torpedo boat from Second World War. Now this one's unusual for a sailing boat. It's got a grey hull. Grey cockpit cover there. And some Simply wonderful looking woodwork. Look at this really rich luster. Lovely detailing here. Even got some stainless steel strips on the step edge there. Very good. It's just amazing the variety of boats you get here in the Port Southern. So you go from that to this rather massive looking catamaran. Massive, absolutely massive. They're like floating houses. You could definitely live on a board one of those if you had to. Now this is a clever system for keeping your boat out of the water. If you use your boat frequently or a commercial operator, you don't want to leave your boat in the water during as much as you can because it will get all fouled up. So this is all run by air and, and it can be run by batteries out on out on the water. So you just drive your boat into it, lift it up, keep it out of the way. One of the larger vessels here at the port of Southampton. Different in style to the Sunseekers we saw. A bit of craftsmanship here. Look at the lovely stainless steel ends to those railing caps, stainless steel hinges. Lovely little brackets to stop your fenders lines from scraping the varnish. Just a bit of information here. Nautical range on this vessel. Very impressive. I 
Again, this is this puts me in mind of a, a really quite an old boat. I mean, it's a brand new boat, but the design echoes back to, I think, something of the sort of from the fifties, perhaps. That's a bit of wood around the, a bit of rope around it, and different coloured hull, different design all over. And here we are, rushing straight back to the modern day. This lovely go fast looking speedboat. Look at that, lots of entertaining space. Looks like potentially a small cubby in the front, possibly for a brief overnight. And a head. Lovely bit of detailing on the side there. More for zipping along and having an entertaining time, that's what that one's all about. Getting back to the variety again, this is a yacht. Don't know if you can make it out on the picture, but it's an aluminium hold yacht, so this is all aluminium. And this yacht was the first yacht to circumnavigate the Arctic Circle twice. So some sort of scientific mission. North about. These are some chaps here that sailed around the world. 30,000 miles non-stop without the aid of technology as well uh, this boat here maiden I think it's to do uh, it's to get ladies on the water it's, uh, I'm not sure that the exact details of that one this is Morgan Star this is a tall ship she has daily cruises out of Port Southampton here That's during boat show you can get on board and experience being on a tall ship at sail as she goes up and down Southampton water excellent if you can organize that and the weather is fair well let's uh, continue on round we are at the furthest point of the marina from the land and the rest of the boat show. So let's head on back. Obviously a few more boats to look out. On the right hand side we have the Fairline, uh, based in Aundel, but have recently opened up a factory just across the water here in Hythe. So we can call them local boys. Some interesting steps here, like an offset little jig in the windscreen there, with steps going up to a up, uh, up deck sun pad on that boat there. I like this one. It's got a sort of architecturalness about it, very straight lines. That's an open version. And then this one here is a similar, same hull, but a, a sort of cockpit version of a cuddy cruiser. And they've both got James Bond names. This one's Skyfall and the other one is Moonraker. various combinations down this side different combinations of sargos there different uh, configurations of indoor space outdoor space quite a few of these boats pretty much have the same hull and the same size but they'll come in various different combinations of being all open or all enclosed or combination and that's to fit various different markets if you're in the Mediterranean or on a lake in Florida somewhere in the States this will probably be right up your street lovely stylish looking entertaining speedboat with 300 horse on the back that's going to be pretty fast it's probably got a heads on board and a 
you got these really large cash rads by comparison. So yeah, so depending on the market, he, the boats come in different flavours to suit the markets. There's a Axo Par here. Very popular in the the Axo Pars. They give you a great combination of outdoor space, indoor space and speed. Some of them are big enough to have a small cabin in the front and, and heads on board, so you can overnight on them. Uh, but they've got a great deal of entertaining space outside, but the space inside if the weather gets rough, and a great turn of speed with a couple of 350s on the stern. Getting bigger down this way. And also smaller at the same time. Looks like more of a river lake crew does, cruiser, doesn't it? A little table there, a little canopy. A picnic on the River Thames up near Henley. That will be just perfect. Like the variation of the similar hole there, I think. Haynes there. On the left hand side, there are Rift Tibigi River boats. And then we've got a few more riverboats on the side here. I particularly like this black one. I could just see myself on the on the river somewhere cruising in that one. Of course it's, all, it's not just about boats at the boat show. We even have cars. Now these are the Dutton cars based on a Suzuki four-wheel drive and I think the one on the right was about £25,000 on the road. Get yourself a four-wheel drive car and a boat at the same time. Don't need to worry about mooring fees with these ones, just park it on the road somewhere. And there's a picture of one there next to a cruise ship. Clearly some good seagoing capabilities. Uh, quite often at Southampton Boat Show, you can see the boat on the left there has having its world premiere. Very popular place for new boats to get released. Being the biggest boat show in Europe, or potentially the world, depending on what your metrics and how you measure it. We'll come up from the marina side. We haven't done all of the marina, but I think that's given you a taste and a flavour of what's going on in the marina. Some big stuff, small stuff, and an amphibious vehicle. Head up on to dry land and have a look at the various stands that are up here there's a number of stands in the open air here in the car park selling various different boats and equipment and then there's an indoor hall which we'll have a quick look around give you an example of what's going on company here selling bow thrusters more important for Handling when in dock, when in docking, our yeah, bow thrusters. A couple of bay liners here, again very much, very much the first boat category. And this company here sells fractional ownership. Now you buy the boat for a quarter of what you pay for the whole thing. You own a quarter of it. And the company takes care of all the maintenance, berthing costs, and then you share it with the other three people. And the obligatory ribs dealership. These ones have inflatable floorboards, making them even more portable. I think that was the selling point of those ones. They're all slightly different. Properties with berths. And this is the Volvo Penta stand. Volvo Penta being probably one of the most popular inboard engines that you would find on boats here at the boat show. Let's head into one of the buildings and see what's going on. As you can see, there's 
awful lot of things that don't make a lot of sense if I'm perfectly honest. It's complicated sun sale holidays and insurance packages. International Marine birthing. Oh, that's some of the artwork from that Atlantic yacht. From the lot, sorry, the lot that yacht that went around to the Antarctic. Or the Arctic. I'll get there eventually. Lots of shiny metal bits. And a Raymarine. Supplies of navigational equipment. And this is what you'll see typically in a lot of boats these days. A single display unit displaying radars, fish finding, boat engine data, plat charts, all various different systems and bot. Really, actually, today I think they're very sophisticated, work really well. I wouldn't be without one. Solar panels. And this is some sort of camera system. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a slight penchant for remotely controlled cameras. I'll come back and have a look at that one later. Talk some, talk about some numbers with them. These are some propellers, which have a variable pitch. More of a specialist use propeller. Water makers on the larger boats. A water maker is very important. More shiny propellers. And something you don't think about is often in boats the mattresses are not rectangular. So this company here specialises in making peculiar sized mattresses for your boat. Teak specialists for all your teak needs. Uh, lots of rigging, sails. With boat ownership comes many expenses. They're probably worse than owning a house in that respect. You cost a lot of money to keep them, and bits are always wearing out, even if you use them or you don't. Various different varnishes there from that stand. Electronic equipment. This is a stabiliser. It's a good example demo of what a stabiliser looks like in operation. It wouldn't be spinning quite that fast, but the... Uh, fins on there are controllable uh, to stabilise a, a larger yacht when it's at anchor. Life vests, including some for dogs there. Might have to pop back later, get one for Rusty. Different varnishing products. products. I hope that just gives you a bit of an idea of what's available. Oh, these things look great, don't they? They're for yachts, they're folding propellers underneath. Sail drives. Well, here we are back out on the pontoons. And here's that naval vessel. Well, I still don't know which, what it's called or where it's going. But it has been coming in and out quite a lot, so I'm guessing it's taken people out on little day trip excursions, volunteers, people who have been part of the organisation. Well, I hope if you've enjoyed this little brief tour through the boat show. I didn't really stop anywhere and look at anything because uh, I thought that'd be too slow. I just thought I'd give you a quick overview. But I'm going to end it here on Morning Star, or Morning Star, Morning Star, the Dutch tall training ship because I've found the cheapest bar in the boat show with, I would probably say, the best view and, and you're on a great tool ship. So I don't think you could deny that this is the best bar at the boat show. Well, until next time, shipmates.